Parts are in the oven. We're gonna get this off the rotisserie and then we can start throwing on the suspension. So a lot going on. And in the meantime, I'm getting parts delivered for my 260Z. So I feel like uh, Mike Patey working in the shop today. And if you don't know who Mike Patey is, he's an aviation enthusiast. He's an awesome dude and he is a maniac. He just completes stuff in, in an ungodly, timely manner. So I'm not that good, but I kind of feel that way running around the shop today. A lot going on. Uh, let's go ahead and start moving forward with some stuff. Welcome back to the shop today. We're back on the 1978 Datsun 280Z. And if you haven't caught up with the last episode, let me bring you up to speed with how far we've gotten so far. The outside front fender wells are Raptor lined. We gave two coats of primer, did the whole seam seal thing, gave another coat of primer, and then did two coats or three coats of Raptor liner on top of that. Once that was all complete, we went ahead and did the same treatment for as far as the epoxy primer goes, that's two coats of Southern Polyurethane's epoxy primer down and then let that dry, put some seam sealer on, put another coat of epoxy primer on top of that. And then we moved on to the base coat. Now I just went with a regular jet black base coat. I did a bunch of coats of base just to make sure everything was covered in all the weird intricate angles within the engine bay itself. Did two of it upside down, flipped it over, did at least two more and then made sure everything was properly covered. After that, we did like three or four coats, same process with the Universal Clear from Southern Polyurethanes as well. All that secured, we pulled off all the tape, pulled off all the masking, and now we're getting ready to move forward with the next part. And just to kind of get started wrapping up the final little bits and pieces, I got a bunch of little plates and things that need to be sandblasted and powder coated. So we're gonna do that today. Let's go ahead and get busy with that. So now that we've got the brackets sandblasted and cleaned up, we're going to go ahead and powder coat those. And you've seen me powder coat in the past, so same process there. We sandblast everything, we degrease everything, and then we throw a little bit of denatured alcohol or denatured alcohol, however you like to say it, on it. Let that evaporate and then apply the powder coat. We're just going with about an 80% gloss black, the same level of gloss black that we have on all of the other uh, components, such as the cross member and 
a whole bunch of other suspension pieces that we've done in a previous video. If you've missed that video, that was a long time ago. That was when I kind of first started filming. Um, it's not very good quality, but the process remains the same. Sandblasting, cleaning, degreasing, denatured alcohol, and then powder coating, throw it in the oven, and it bakes it on. It's just like baking cookies, 400 degrees for about 15 minutes at part temperature. Once that comes up, everything flows out and becomes a rock hard coating. So it's a lot stronger than even a 2K uh, type primer and or paint product. Uh, powder coating is even more resistant to chemicals and wear and tear and chipping and things of that nature. So we have the little bit of brackets left over, some sway bar brackets and some cross member brackets. The transmission cross member itself, I needed to clean all that stuff up and you just, you kind of misplace parts as you go along. And I found those and they were not coated. So once we've powder coated all of those, I think we're to the point to where we might be able to get this thing off the rotisserie. So that's exciting. We've hit a milestone in the project. Um, when we pull off the mounts, we're gonna have to kind of respray the base and clear that way it matches uh, where those mounting surfaces were for the actual rotisserie mounts themselves. Obviously that didn't get painted, that's been covered up by the mounts the entire time. So we're gonna get that pulled off, throw it on the lift, get all those mounts pulled off, and then we'll look at what we have to do to make that look like the rest of the front engine bay. Once all that's completed, which is kind of where we're at, I went ahead and took care of a little bit of rust inside the interior compartment. And then that firewall patch that we never got our final coats of epoxy on uh, from the battery tray and firewall repair area in a previous video up there. Uh, got the final coats of epoxy, did three coats of epoxy on the firewall portion of that. Again, seam sealer epoxy over that as well. And then the driver's side floor pan wasn't bad enough to be replaced. So I just went ahead and scuffed everything up, removed any residual rust and or surface rust and did the same process. A couple coats of epoxy primer, seam sealer, and then another coat of epoxy primer. That's gonna be good enough for us to put some sound deadening insulation on, maybe some jute mat and some new carpet and the interior will be done at a later date. I think we're to the point where we can start looking at pulling this thing off the rotisserie. Now, once it's off the rotisserie, I've gotta go back and paint those areas where the rotisserie was mounted to the front of the car and rear of the car. Uh, the rear, not so much because it's mounted on the bumper struts. The front, it's mounted on kind of the firewall forward area. So we're going to have to do a little bit of touch-up paint there. So um, beyond that, we're looking at hanging corners so we can get the suspension mounted and everything. Now, in a previous video, I've already disassembled, sandblasted, rebuilt entirely all four corners of the suspension along with the brakes and everything else. So it has all new bearings, seals. Uh, everything was torn down to bare metal and then powder coated, all new powder coating on that as well. And those corners are ready to be installed. Those little bitty brackets that I have to deal with today are the only things that are uncoated. Parts in the oven, working on this one. We're getting ready to pull this one off the rotisserie. And so it's got to go back on the lift and then we're going to start hanging suspension corners. So a lot is moving relatively quickly and it just feels like I got a lot going on. So we're going to get busy now. Enough talking. That's gonna bring this video to a close. We just sandblasted, cleaned up, degreased, and powder coated the final little bits of the suspension, little brackets and plates and everything like that. So a couple little parts that go on the steering rack to hold in the bushings, a uh, couple flat plates that hold on the sway bar bushings, and then finally, or the transmission cross member itself, that was the last final pieces that needed to be sandblasted and powder coated. So we went ahead and did all that today and we pulled the car off the rotisserie today. So that's all exciting, fun stuff. It's always fun to put them on the rotisserie and flip them upside down and do all the crazy metal fabrication and upside down work. But it's also a lot more fun when you finally get to a part in the build to where 
you can take it off the rotisserie and not flip it upside down anymore and put parts on it. And that's pretty much where we're at right now. After those parts cool down, we're gonna be starting to hang the suspension. So if you want to see that, you gotta click the thumbs up button. Hit subscribe if you haven't done so already. Turn on your bell notifications. That way you get notified just as soon as I post another video. Wasps. <sighs> Alright, if you want to see me hang all the suspension, go ahead and click that thumbs up button. If you haven't done so already, please consider subscribing. Turn on your bell notifications, that way you get notified just as soon as I post another video. If you have any questions, leave a comment below. I appreciate it as always, and until next time, thanks for watching this one.